Did I have an anchor baby? So my YouTube channel is all about discussing China and hopefully helping people understand how to deal with China, whether you live there or just understanding China in general, if you're going to do any kind of business, have a relationship with someone who's Chinese or, you know, just in case you're curious, because China has taken a big part on the world stage at the moment and has to be held accountable for a lot of missteps as well as recognized for the things that they do well. One of the things that they do not do well, however, is accept criticism of any kind whatsoever. I'm talking about the Chinese government, of course, but Chinese society as a whole is directed by the Chinese government and told how to behave when faced with criticism, and it's very nasty. You see, in the majority of my videos, when I criticize China for whichever reason, I usually back it up with actual video footage that I've shot myself or actual experience that I've personally experienced in my 14 and a half years living in China. The thing is, a lot of these criticisms uh, and truths really cut to the bone and really hurt because at the moment, Chinese society is very insecure. And you can see, we call them glass hearts, we call them 50 centers, but these ultra nationalists that will go after and attack me in my comment section or go after my wife my family, and not just them, the uh, sort of uh, foreign mouthpieces of the Chinese Communist Party, of which a number are growing these days, will also try their best to attack me now. Now we have to recognize this all for what it really is. When you cannot argue against or debate against somebody's opinion, so for instance I show footage of something happening in China, I talk about it, I'm presenting proper evidence as to the fact that this does go on. So instead of debating, let's just say, the uh, bad hygiene practices of uh, especially the older generation in China, the spitting in the streets and the blowing of noses on the sidewalk and the public defecation and things like that, instead of saying, yes, it's a bad thing that needs to change, they would rather attack my character, try to do a character assassination to try and dilute my message or at least try and uh, make people think twice about the things that I have to say because if you paint me as a horrible, terrible man, that means that anything that I say can't be true, right? Well, at least that's the logic behind it. So, you know, a while ago I put out a video about birth tourism, something that I find despicable, especially the Chinese agents. They put these adverts up on the Chinese internet telling uh, prospective parents why they should pay these agents to fly over and give birth in countries like America. They tell them just how, what a fantastic opportunity it is because your child will get citizenship, all the benefits that come along with it. You'll be able to uh, squirrel your money out of China into the USA through things like trust funds and investment for the child. You'll be able to open bank accounts in America. So they give you a laundry list of all the things you can do if you have your child in America and how it benefits you. So it's kind of like a tool rather than you know, something that you want to do because it's just the kind of the thing that you would do. Um, I have a huge problem with this. I have a video all about it where I translated some of those websites. You can go check it out if you're interested. But now one of the, the new tactics to attack my character is to say that, look at me, I'm such a hypocrite because I make a video talking about how bad this is, but I myself had an anchor baby in America. Well, I mean, I am not here to defend myself and try to justify myself, but I would like to quickly put that to bed just by explaining um, my situation. You see, my videos, at least not anymore for a very long time, are not about me. When I started making YouTube videos, I was in my 20s, and of course, I was having the adventure of a lifetime, and a lot of the, the videos were quite narcissistic and showing myself going around having a good time. And, you know, I outgrew all of that kind of stuff, and for the last I don't know, at least five, six, seven years, my videos have all been about understanding China and trying to help people out there with their dealings with China. Because, you know, too few people out there really understand how to deal with China. They take China at face value and they overlook all these sort of pitfalls which are right there. And when you can speak the language and read and write the language like I can, it's very clear. It's clear as day to see right in front of you what's being said behind everyone's back around the world because not too many people actually really understand the culture. Anyway, so after our very close scrapes with both the PLA, SWAT teams, 
the Communist Party chiefs and so on up in Inner Mongolia when we were filming Conquering Northern China. It's a big story and we've told it, we actually told it on the China Unscripted podcast, which I'll link in the description. So feel free if you want to go hear about that whole fiasco. But we realized that basing ourselves in China was a mistake because at any given time, we, we could be subject to arbitrary searches. They could, they register where every foreigner lives. They could come to both myself and my uh, business partner, Seamilk's house, if they wanted to. Just come in, take our computers, take our footage, take our cameras, do whatever they wanted, if we happen to make a video that annoyed them enough. So we decided, you know what, we have to move out of China if we're going to continue doing what we do, because we want to keep doing these adventure videos in Asia and around the world and, you know, our ADV China stuff and, um, our own personal channels but we realized that it would be a mistake to stay in China so of course the natural progression from here is let's find a place where we can do it and my business partner Seamilk being American it made sense that we did it in America now, I gotta tell you <laughs> it was not easy getting me a South African a work visa for America it took us about two years to finally figure that all out it was a long drawn out process involving immigration lawyers and a lot of money and a lot of back and forth and eventually we managed to pull it off because that's one thing about america if you follow the legal channels if you do things correctly um you can do things you know it's one of the things i like about america the most is it's very reasonable it's got a very personal a lot of people might not agree with me but you know when you've dealt with uh the South African government your whole life and then the Chinese government dealing with the American governments like talking to your best friend um, but basically I got here and um, of course I'm not going to leave my wife in China so she came to join me in America too so you know maybe not a lot of you are familiar my patrons certainly know my wife had uh, ovarian cysts and uh, some pretty bad uh, surgery that she had to have uh, about three three years back she's been in uh, surgery for five hours <clears throat> and uh, they've come out twice to show me sort of um, you know bits and pieces they've been pulling out of her <laughs> um, it's nasty but uh, five hours and it's worrying you know anyway, we'll see. Um, in China and it was a very worrying and terrible time for both myself and her but she had the surgery and she was warned that if she tried to have children when she had the those cysts and so on it could actually kill her so we couldn't attempt to have a child even though we wanted one and um, it took well they suggested that we wait at least a year and a half before trying to have a child again anyway the timeline works out that we were in America when she fell pregnant and it's actually kind of a miracle our child is a bit of a miracle baby she shouldn't have been um, able to be born because of the complications from the surgery and in fact when my wife had the c-section the doctors discovered that um, they, they actually fixed a mistake where the ovary had um, stuck to an intestine or something it's kind of a horror show for someone like me I have very very bad bad feelings when it comes to surgery uh, my brother died during surgery when he was seven years old so of course I uh, absolutely <laughs> if I can avoid any kind of surgery to any loved one ever I try anyway um, I'm getting off point here but basically she fell pregnant while uh, we were here in the US now I'm working legally in America I'm paying taxes which is exorbitant I'm paying ridiculous amounts of health insurance that's one thing that I can definitely say that America uh, sucks at and that is health insurance it's just one of those things that I personally I don't care I'm feel healthy I've never had to really go to the hospital for anything too serious in my life I wouldn't bother paying but I have the responsibility of looking after my wife and now my newborn daughter so of course I have to pay this stupid exorbitant fee so anyway I'm not planning on going anywhere I'm planning to remain in the USA legally on my visa for as long as possible and uh, just continue I have no plans to move anywhere else in the future but we never know what happens you know life goes up and down and especially with the uncertainty of the world who knows where I'll end up next the fact of the matter is she fell pregnant and uh, we had our child here incredibly expensive to have a child in America uh, like I said before but that's just the way it worked but now 
a lot of people are coming along saying, look at you. You say that birth tourism is bad, but you're doing exactly the same thing. You're having an anchor baby. Um, not really. <laughs> Let me ask you this. I'll, I'll put forth a scenario to you. Let's just say you move to, I don't know, let's pick a country, Spain. You move to Spain for work. Um, you're not Spanish. You're American. Um, and your wife is Russian. So the two of you go to Spain because obviously your wife is married to you and she's going to follow you. And you're living in Spain and your wife, who you didn't think was going to be able to fall pregnant, falls pregnant. And you decide to have a baby. So what are you going to do? Are you A, going to have a baby in Spain where you're working? B, cancel your job, fly back to the USA for months, lose out on work, lose out on your work visa, lose out on all your stuff because you decided you want to fly back to your home country to have the kid, have the kid there, or C, have an abortion. Well, I chose A, except remember in my specific case, my option B is, well, my option A is have the child in the country where I'm working and planning to stay long term um, and where I'm paying taxes and paying exorbitant uh, health insurance, or B, buy a plane ticket forego and forfeit all my health insurance that I'm paying, see, forget about all the tax and stuff I'm paying, fly to a third world country and I have two choices, one South Africa, one, to Ch one is China. Um, deal with the dodgy health systems in both because the Chinese hospital system is subpar and so is the South African hospital system, it's subpar too. And I don't trust either one of them for the safety of uh, my wife, especially with her complications. Have a child there. Um, lose my job, lose months worth of work because I'm now overseas messing around in a, a country with dodgy internet and so on. Um, or C, have an abortion. Those are my options. So of course I chose option A. It's a miracle baby. I want the best for my child. I plan to make sure she grows up in a, in a healthy environment where she can go out and play on the streets and in parks and things like that, which you can't do in South Africa. It's too dangerous. And in China, the education system is not to my liking. It's a lot of brainwashing. It's a lot of propaganda. You know, there's a lot of I guas. They say you have to love the country. You have to sing the, the national anthem and uh, recite Mao Zedong's poems and all sorts of crap like that, which, to be honest, is just not something that I'm keen on for my, um, my, my, my daughter and my uh, offspring, I should say. And uh, so, yeah, my options very clear. And uh, I'll tell you one thing, <sighs> having a child in the USA pretty much bankrupted me. <laughs> incredibly, incredibly expensive. The amount of cost to have a child here in California, um, I could have bought a house in South Africa. It wiped out my savings completely. If it wasn't for the support of my patrons and uh, everybody else, I wouldn't have made it through. So is she an anchor baby? No, absolutely not. Another thing that people don't seem to understand about the American immigration system is just because you have a child here, it, does have, it actually has no bearing on your citizenship status. I mean, if I were to wait until she was 18 years old, then she could sponsor me a green card. It's a long time to wait. I don't plan that far ahead. I personally don't even know if I'll be around or alive in 18 years' time. But um, that's kind of the only way that having a child in America could grant me any sort of citizenship. So she's absolutely not an anchor baby. She's a miracle baby. She's my daughter. I love her to bits, just as I love my wife. And I want to give her the best future possible. And I'm not taking advantage of the American system because those birth tourism people are. They fly here. They take advantage of everything on the taxpayer's dollar fly out and never contribute to the American economy ever again. I, on the other hand, am living in, in America, working legally in America and paying my taxes here. I'm not a citizen, but I'm paying taxes to a country that I'm not a citizen of, you know, I'm contributing. Um, and so from that point of view, uh, it's chalk and cheese. Anyway, this has turned into too much of a me trying to defend myself type of thing, which is not the aim of this video. The actual aim of this video is to just put it out there, some of the nice new little methods that uh, the ultra-nationalists and uh, CCP apologists are trying to use in order to try and destabilize my message or silence me. And one of them is to constantly question my legal status in America, because they obviously want to 
mess with me and get me kicked out or something. And uh, secondly, to go on about me having an anchor baby. Both of which are not true. And um, I wouldn't be here online out in the open in public uh, going on about what I do and where I live and how things work if I was working illegally or doing anything that wasn't above board. Makes sense. Anyway, thank you for sitting through all of this, guys. Thank you very much for watching and for supporting myself and Sasha. You guys have changed my life. And uh, I will not stop, no matter how underhanded they get, and no matter what little tricks they try, I'm on top of it. Got some fascinating stories, which will come out. Um, you know, I've been, recently they tried to catfish me, which was funny. And uh, yeah, you'll see. All sorts of cool stuff. Anyway, stay awesome, stay strong. I know it's a terrible time for everyone out there, but just remember, when we get through all of this, the world will be changed but we will all be stronger for it. Anyway, till next time, you know the drill, as always. Stay awesome.